My 280-ish gallon reef tank has been running for oh, about five years now, and it's never really had any major issues, you know, discounting things like cyanobacteria and the various algaes that, you know, basically every reef tank encounters those things. I've had pretty great results overall with both my fish and all my corals. You know, everyone goes through a few fish losses early on in a new tank, um, new situations, care, well, but nothing has died recently in the last few years, so I'm really great with that, and I think most of my original losses were due to that chloride. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman and this is an update on my reef tank. With so much SPS coral in my tank, I've been relying on my calcium reactor quite a bit to keep up with the demand. You can see that I actually need to add more media here and I end up needing to add media about every other month or so. I use a HANA alkalinity checker to test my tank and I have a calcium checker as well. And as of today, I'm down around 6.5 dKH. So I'm actually going to go ahead and turn up the reactor a little bit. And of course, the Destaco makes that really simple. All you have to do is turn a little dial. And so I'll turn it up and I'll test again in a few days and we'll see where we're at and we'll adjust it from there. I generally like to be around eight or nine or so, but remember, never make big changes quickly in a reef tank. You know, big changes, no matter what it is, is going to be bad news. I almost guarantee it. Now, I mentioned that I've got cyanobacteria in places in my tank, and this is sort of a never ending issue for my tank. And really, I think that it's due to the amount of food that I put in. Of course, you know, like most people, I feed my fish every day, but I also feed my corals and acropora and montipora at least a few times each week. And all that food results in nitrates and phosphates in the water that might actually surprise you as to the level. The last reading I had on phosphate was about 0.06 parts per billion, which is kind of on the higher side uh, if you were to read on a reef to reef. And I don't really worry too much about it though, and my corals don't really seem to care. What does care though, is my Gorgonian. Now, I thought I would try a Gorgonian two years ago when I was at Reefapalooza. And you know, it's sort of been hanging in there, but really not doing well, and it's been shrinking over time. This thing is a cyanobacteria magnet. It seems to grow on the Gorgonian tissue before it grows anywhere else in the tank. And of course, when the cyano is growing there, the polyps don't come out, that means it doesn't get fed. These things aren't photosynthetic, so if it doesn't get fed, it doesn't get you know any nutrition. Now, I'm really open to ideas. If you have any, I've tried high flow, low flow. This might just be a type of coral that's just not going to do well in my tank. On the other hand, I've been having incredible success with my Acroporas, Montiporas, even my Anacropora is growing like crazy. When I started this tank, I thought, well, you know, these things do grow. So instead of just buying cheap little things to start with, let's get the best, most colorful frags that we really like. And I'll just let them grow out over time. And as you can see, they have grown out. Of course, you know, this is the largest tank I've ever run. But, you know, by far, these colonies are the largest coral colonies that I've ever taken care of in a tank that I own. These are, they're really just incredible. I've got a little Acropora crab in here somewhere, but you know where I used to see it from time to time, it's all but invisible these days amongst the deep branches of my Acropora colonies, but I do think it's still in there. And you know, speaking of invisible things, I did add some Bergia nudibranches a while ago in order to get rid of the Aptasia that's in my tank. I bought them online, there's no local source for them, I added them to the tank, and like usual, within a couple hours they disappeared. And I haven't seen one since then. So, you know, did they get eaten? Maybe my blue spotted angelfish ate them? I'm really not sure. The Aptasia doesn't seem to be spreading much, so maybe they're still in there, but it would be nice to see them every once in a while. I made a video a while ago featuring some footage of my potter's angelfish spawning, and they still do that a lot of nights right as the lights are turning off. Just before the lights are fully off, they'll sort of spiral and dance their way up into the water column. It's really pretty neat to see. One day, I think it'd be fun to try and capture the eggs. All you have to do is turn off the pumps and then skim them off the surface. And then you can raise them. And captive bred pygmy angelfish are totally possible to do as a hobbyist. And I think it would be exciting to try them, just like it'd be exciting to spawn and raise my Acropora. My Starkey damselfish is also doing great. And often it sleeps right under the frag rack in the front of the tank. Sometimes it also sleeps under the nearby rocks. It's interesting to watch it excavate its little caves. Suddenly, you know, you'll see a poof of sand and you know it's digging a new burrow when you see that. And this damsel has been totally non-aggressive. And as such, I would strongly recommend the Starkey damsel to anyone looking for a small reef fish with an interesting personality, but without much aggression. Sometimes it actually does seem to swim around with my coal tang, uh, you know, like their buddies or something. They follow each other through the tank. 
It's a very deliberate movement when they're doing this. And so I'm really not sure what's going on between them. Uh, you know, I'll try to get a video sometime for you if I can catch them actually doing this. It's, uh, it's kind of random when they do it or not. Now, I did manage to get a scratch on my glass. And, you know, it's not a little scratch. I'm just glad that it happened on the small end of the tank rather than on the front. Uh, but, you know, be careful when you're cleaning your glass. I use one of those magnet scrapers with the Velcro. And I think I got a little shell or a piece of rock under it. And, you know, that's all it took to put a giant scratch in my glass. I'm really not sure there's anything I can do about it right now. So I'll just ignore it. <laughs> it's on the side. I can, I can ignore it probably. Um, but let me know if you have ideas on fixing it. I'm totally ears and I'd be happy to fix it if I can. My tank has a plethora of little tube worms everywhere. And my Montipora and Acropora actually grow over them, which looks totally weird. I've been thinking what I could maybe do to reduce the population of these tube worms. And so I've been thinking about maybe adding a copper band butterfly fish or something like that. I worry about my Achilles tang or blue spotted angelfish terrorizing a new fish, especially a fish like those. Um, but I could always tape the mirror back up onto my tank. I have a video up about that. And that does work pretty well when adding a passive fish with aggressive tank mates. Also, I want to point out that I've been thinking about a copper band for a while. It's a fish that I've just always liked. But you should never get a fish just to solve some problem. Because, you know, what will happen when that problem is solved? Your fish might starve to death or, you know, whatever it is. It's, you know, not good to get a fish just to solve a problem. Get a fish when you're interested in it long term. These fish can live for years or even decades. And they deserve good care throughout that entire time span. So, on to the topic of moonlights. I should try the Radeon Moonlight settings and see what it's like from a brightness standpoint. I worry that they're probably too bright, just like almost every other commercial moonlight. My customized Apex Moonlights are still brighter than they should be, but I've, I've got a new idea and I hopefully can baffle it a little bit more, and I'll let you know if it works well. Um, and I've already reduced their brightness significantly over what it was to begin with. I've also been thinking about perhaps doing a live stream on my channel. Uh, I do need to make a batch of frozen fish food, and I can turn that into a stream if there's some interest. You can do some Q&A, and you can uh, you know, make some frozen fish food with me. So let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments, and we'll see what we can do about that. So you know, that's about it for this video. Thanks for sticking with me throughout the whole update on my reef tank. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Have a fantastic day. Bye.